guys, Dirty here from Premiere Basics, and what was that? I'm not a slow editor, you are. Nah, just kidding guys. Today I'm gonna give you 10 tricks to speed up your editing process so that you can finish those projects faster and get back to playing video games. So trick number one is about the beautiful connection between Premiere and After Effects, AKA the dynamic link. As you know, this connection doesn't really go smooth, which results in terrible playback. To fix that, duplicate the linked composition and then right click on it. Then choose render and replace. This window will pop up and make sure that the format is set to QuickTime and the presets to Apple ProRes. This is a high quality codec, that way we can use these clips in the final export as well. Click OK and let it do its thing. Once it's done, the clip is just like any other video in a timeline, which means butter smooth playback. But keep in mind, you can't go back to After Effects if you want to make adjustments. For that, you need to go back to the original one and then render it again. You know, that's why you made that duplicate. Oh, by the way, exporting your video will also go a lot faster now. The second trick is about using markers. We all know that we can press M on the keyboard to set a marker in a timeline, but you can also hold Alt and click the marker. Now you can drag it out as long as you want. And if you double click on it, you can give it a name, for example, intro. This is very useful because you can tag the chapters in your video when editing, giving you an instant overview of your entire timeline. Trick number three, have you ever imported a 4K clip into a 1080p sequence? Well, then you know that you have to scale it down every time that you do that. But what if you can make Premiere Pro do that automatically? Well, head over to the edit window on top and go to preferences, then select media. Open up the default media scaling menu and here you can choose between scale to frame size or set to frame size. Now when you select one of these, Premiere will automatically make your video fit to the sequence size. But Jordy, what's the difference between these two? Well, if you choose scale to frame size, Premiere will resample the 4K video into a 1080p video. If you use set to frame size, Premiere will use the scale property to make the picture smaller. I don't recommend using the scale to frame size option if you're still planning on scaling it up because you will lose quality. Number four, sometimes Sometimes the effects controls window can be a big mess, especially when you have multiple effects on a clip. If you need to adjust some keyframes, but you can't really find them fast enough, well, just click on the filter icon on the bottom and then enable show only keyframes properties. Now Premiere will only show those properties where you have set keyframes to. You can also go for the show only edited properties options. This will show all the properties that you've made adjustments to. I actually have a shortcut for these options so that I can easily switch between them. That makes it even faster, faster. All right, trick number five is probably the best one on the list because I'm sure yet you've never heard about this one before. So you just finished filming and now you have all your shots in the project window and it's just like one big mess. Now to make it more organized, create a new sequence and open it up and drag all of your clips into that sequence. Now drag that timeline window in between the program monitor and your other timeline. Now you can browse through all of your clips right here. And if you found one that you need, then just drag it inside your original timeline. This technique is called pancake editing because it's like a pancake pancake. I guess. But it's a great way to improve your workflow. And you know what else helps to improve my workflow, guys? Well, that is Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. And as you might know, I have my own classes on Skillshare, but I also take a lot of classes myself to sharpen my skill or just to learn something new. For example, Amber Schaefer's class, Comedy Filmmaking, make your low budget videos 100% funnier. In this class, Amber teaches you how to enhance the comedy in every step of your process, all the way from writing to cinematography and editing. And I actually learned to implement the fundamentals of comedy in my own videos. But <laughs> Now, Amber says that comedy is something that you can learn and not something that you have to be born with. It are techniques after all, which I think is really motivating and inspiring. This is definitely a class that I recommend to every creative individual. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community with new classes added every week. You can browse through thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and want to explore their creativity and learn new skills. It's the perfect place to invest in yourself and in your personal growth. From film production to cinematography, Adobe Premiere Pro, you name it. Or you can check out the staff picked classes and hey that's me here this is my advanced class for premiere pro editing guys i highly recommend to take this class as well the skillshare is completely ad free so you won't be distracted when you're focusing on the class that you're taking so start discovering new classes now the first 1000 people to use the link or the code premiere basics will get a one month free trial of skillshare definitely check out the link in the description down below for more information and now let's go back to premiere trick number six already let's say that you're editing a video but you hear all of 
pops in between the audio clips or at the start. Well, as you probably know, you can fix that by hitting Control Shift D on your keyboard. But then you need to adjust the length of these transitions for every single time. Stop doing that, guys. Seriously, you're wasting time. Head over to the effects window and open up the menu. Now choose Set Default Transition Duration. The properties will open up and here you can set the duration to whatever works for you. For me, that's gonna be 0.25 seconds. Now you can go through your entire video in no time. And if you want, you can even select all your audio clips at once, hit Ctrl Shift D on your keyboard. Now all the audio clips will have a short fade in and out transition. And here we are at trick number seven. I have a few text layers in my timeline and I'm gonna change the font for every single one of them. Well, if you go to the graphics and titles menu on top, click on replace fonts in project. Here you can see a list of all the fonts used in your project. Select it and choose another one from the list. Then click OK and voila, it's that easy you just saved a ton of time. So if you're looking for a clip in the project window, it can be hard to find because Premiere doesn't always show you the right thumbnail. Now to fix that, all you need to do is hover with your mouse until you find the frame that you would like as a thumbnail. Now right click the video and choose set poster frame. Awesome, but to make this even more easier, you can set a shortcut so that you don't have to right click the video every time. The next trick, you're looking for stock footage on the internet and you're always copying and dragging files into folders and it's just a whole big mess. Well, you can use the plugin from Storyblocks now, where you can find the stock footage that you need inside a window in Premiere. After downloading, the files will appear right here in the project window. So there's no need to leave Premiere anymore. When you start working on a new project, the first thing you should do is go to the profile icon on top and click download settings. And here you can set the download destination on your PC, which should be in the folder of your project. And now everything that you download will be inside that folder. This is a huge time saver and there's no need to go look in your web browser for stock assets anymore. If you want to check out Storyblocks, guys, I'll leave a link in the description down below as well. Now, last but not least, if you want to develop an incredibly fast workflow in Premiere, you must learn all the tools in the toolbar first. So check out the video here on my left, guys, where you will learn everything about that. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, Skillshare, for the support. And as always, stay creative.